I'm going to be installing a barn type sliding door in this section here because as you can see there's no place at the top there to attach the door so I'm going to modify the door to make it fit. I bought this barn door hardware which I'm going to be using so I'm just going to be unboxing it now. I've got the box open and now we're going to just see all the pieces that they've supplied. So we've got the, the crossbars. And then we've got all the different screws. So we've got some really large screws like that, which are probably 10 centimeter screws, and some plugs. The support to keep it away from the wall. A bag of washers, some more nuts and bolts with caps on it for the door holders. And the door stoppers and buffers at the end, two of those, and the door rollers and the door slider to keep your door in place so that it doesn't wobble. And then we've got the door runners that attach to the top of the door. And there's two of those, because this is a single door operation. And then of course, some instructions. Normally this little piece would just slot in there, but as you can see, it's not going down. So I'm going to have to file it a little bit so that I can actually get it to go in there and lie flush with the other one because there's about a two millimeter gap in the sides like that so it's not fitting in properly. At the top of the door where I placed all the plastic which is 26 centimeters in I'm now going to be measuring down four centimeters from there to there where I'm going to be marking and then drilling the holes. I've just placed the runner on top so that I can get the exact marking for the second hole. So I've got my one hole there and there, and I'm doing the same on the other side. I'm going to be using a size eight drill bit because these are M8 um, bolts that have got to be attached here. When you're attaching the bolt, make sure that you've got one washer on one side and the other washer for the other side. And now you have to thread from underneath to get the bolt to come through the top here. When you're putting your runner on, so this is my back of my door, you need to have the runners facing so that they're curving over that way. So 
the rod rail will go underneath here. My son made me this piece, which I'm going to be using to support the end of my runners on. My walls are jib rock, so I'm not going to be able to use the screws that were supplied with this particular unit. I'm going to be working with the toggle system. So I've got toggles that will hold up to uh, 10 kilo toggles. And when you're putting your piece together, I've also had to get some washers so that the screw head doesn't pass through that little piece. So to assemble the toggle system, you have to put the washer on first and then put your screw through the big metal bar and then place one of the supports underneath the hole and put your screw in and then place your big washer onto the back of the screw as well. And now when you're placing the toggle piece at the end, you see that collapses like that. What you want to do is place it this way around so that when you tighten the toggle, it flattens against the wall like that. If you turn it around the other way, it's going to just collapse. So make sure that you put it on that way. So I've threaded my toggle in as far down as I can get it to go that it can still collapse once I insert it into the wall because otherwise you've got a lot of screwing to do. So I'm going to be putting them on all the holes. To drill the holes for the toggles I'm using a size 10 drill bit because these are quite large when you collapse them. So you need to have quite a big hole for that to be collapsed into to thread it through the hole so that it can snap open like that. And the height that you're going to be measuring to drill your holes into the wall is the height of your door plus 4.3 centimetres or 43 millimetres. And that's where you drill the holes. I'm just taking my special little piece that I had made and I'm spray painting that in matte black. According to my instructions, it says I must drill according to the line of 450 millimetres for the holes. However, when I measure the distance between my holes, it's only 40 centimetres. So I'd suggest you measure the distance between your holes before you drill into the wall. If you can get help to do this, it would make it the job a lot easier. But you can do it by yourself, which is what I'm doing. So now before you attach any of your screws to the top, you must put your buffer onto the end piece because this is a closed unit and you won't be able to get your buffers on once you've secured that piece onto the wall. So when you're putting your buffer piece on, Make sure that you've got your little screws to tighten it at the top. So I've got my buffer on now and now I can attach all the screws. And when you're putting your buffer on, make sure it's on the right side so that when the door is on this side, you want the buffers here, not on the opposite side. For the joiner, I've used one of the screws that was provided because I've gone into a stud and I can't put a toggle in there. So I've put this one in on here and now I'm going to be attaching the end piece. So I've put the toggles in there and now I just have to tighten that. I've got a piece of aluminium foil and all I've done is poked a wee hole in it and I'm going to be using some of this flat black paint to just cover up the washers. And I'm going to be spraying the toggles as well. I've sprayed everything. I've got my buffers in place so that they can be adjusted when the door goes on and now we can put the door on. I've got the door on and it moves really, really nicely. And now we've got two last things to do. So one of the things is you've got to place the little door guide on the bottom. Now for myself personally, I like to place it pretty close. 
close to the skirting so that nobody kicks their toe on it. So I'm going to be using double sided tape to put this one on because I don't want to drill into the tiles. So we're putting that on. And the next ones that we have to put on are the safety runners. These are put in place so that the big runners don't fall off. So when you put them on, what we're going to do is we're going to rotate them by placing it right on the end of the door. But you're going to rotate it like that. And then once you've got it screwed down, you rotate it back to hold the runners in place so they don't fall off. For the little disc that's to be put at the top, I like to put it on the opposite side of the roller so that when the wind blows, it stops the door shaking. So you screw it right on the end like that and then you turn it inward so that it holds against the bar here. It's a bit hard to see because it's all black. To cover up the bolts, I'm going to be using these large gems and I'm going to put a pattern in the middle using some of these small gems and these ones are what they call AB rhinestones. They're self-adhesive but I will be gluing them on. I've glued my rhinestones on and I've just draped the AB one from one to the other and now I'm going to do the same on the other screw and just drape it to the other bolt as well. So I put the two of them on and that's what they look like. And there's my custom made cardboard box door completed. I'm extremely pleased how that turned out and it opens and closes so beautifully. So just with a small touch of your finger and the door just opens. And of course closes and catches on the buffers. In the previous video I showed you how to make this particular door out of a cardboard box. If you'd like to see that, please check out my channel. If you found this video helpful or you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Really appreciate it if you would subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.